There you go. Okay. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Jaws Value Working Group, uh, March 25th. And please add yourself in the meeting minutes and tell how you are feeling. And today we are going to start with our discussion with the share of voice that is organizational impact. So I missed the last meeting. So if any of you can update or anything going on, I have posted the link. We had a lot of discussion about share of voice if, mess if memory serves um, and, and making it organizational impact and reshifting from marketing terms toward terms that are pertaining to community development. And if anyone else can tell me if my summary is. No, you're right. And I think there were a couple things. I think it's going to end up, I was looking at it earlier, and I think it's going to end up in as a couple of metrics. So I think Kevin had brought forward, like, are we looking at value that the organization brings to a community, the value that is derived by an organization from the community? So there's like some directionality there. Um, yeah. And like the influence that a corporation or an organization has on a community, which is still a kind of a third thing. Right. And so I think we should probably just kind of keep them as separate things. Yeah. And just kind of lay them out as three separate things. And that would be good. And I, I think agree. share of voice is a lot about the last, like what yeah. influence does an organization have as observed in a space. So what I'm yes. hearing is, sorry. So what I'm hearing is we are thinking of two or three atomic metric from this single metric. Correct. Just, and I don't know that they all stem from the metric, but I think they just stem from the discussion <laughs> of the metric. And, and I think they're actually all captured here. So like what value, does an organization bring to a community? And the value, value can, yeah, and yeah, go ahead, man. What value is derived from the community? That's a second metric, just an issue of directionality. And then probably what influence does an organization have on a community? I don't care about my barking dog when it's all just all you. <laughs> so how influence is different from what organizations bring to the community? Influences or organization is also impacting the community and they are bringing something in Suppose you could influence in a negative way. That is so also you, bringing the negativity in the community. That's possible. So just the, <laughs> you, we've all been in meetings where the presence of an individual has, has a large influence <laughs> on the <laughs> dynamics of that meeting. <laughs> one are we thinking to start with? Well, we could go take a look at where share of voice is, the old share of voice is at now. So I'll put it in the chat. And maybe we could simply ask ourselves like what of those three, where does this one, um, like where does it align with mm -hmm. the most? And then we just go from there as the, as the way the text is written. Don't worry about the 
don't worry about the title at, the, at this point. So if you read the description. And the description's in my view, very, very much still a sure voice. So then do you think this can angle pivot most easily <laughs> to <laughs> ah, right. somebody somebody's, somebody's been watching a Silicon Valley. That's right. <laughs> Silicon. <laughs> <laughs> so can this one pivot most easily to be the value that a company brings to a community, the value that is derived from a community or the influence that an organization has on a community slash project? Influence is what I think. Okay. Is, then is, is probably, yeah. But probably the easiest one to kind of move towards given this, what we have here. With this document, I don't know if others have different opinions. Uh, from the description, I'm feeling it's like you're comparing the influence of different organizations within a community. The question right now is which, based on the text that we have here, and we can sort out the text, but I think oh, not agreed oh. with me in a sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's influence. Uh, okay. But the, but the problem with this metric is that influence is a proxy for for market share, right? What does that so, mean? Uh, the influence that the, that the organization has in this area is kind of a proxy for market share, which would be, which would actually be kind of a value that the organization is deriving, right? They control this much of the market, right? Or this much of the, the ecosystem, or they have, they have this much influence over the thing that they're trying to do. So how is that related to market share and how is that problematic? Uh, so market share is probably a, so for, if we, if we go back to the kind of the directionality or the perspective market share is probably a metric that uh, the organization would consider a, that, that would be value for them. So if the, the, three ways, the three ways that we're talking about it is an organization influencing a community, an organization driving value from a community or a community driving value from something, right? So is that correct? The, the three ways we were talking about it? It's about the value that an organization brings to a community. Yeah. The value that is derived by an organization. By, by the organization, yeah. yeah. And so those two are very closely related to me because they're, they're, they're so I would say they're, I would say they're connected. different because their perspective is different. So the, uh, yep, I agree. I mean, they are, they are different perspectives, but they're both about kind of an as, ascribing of value, whether that's ascribed to the company or it's ascribed to the community. So the, uh, the influence, the, the, the level that an organization can influence a community or a corporation. It's almost a, uh, uh, I want to say, I don't know if filter is the right word, but it's, it's almost a filter on the value that they can drive. Like we can, we can drive this much value if we have this much influence or we can control our value if we can control, we can, or we can, uh, we can control the value that we get from the community if we have the power to influence it in certain directions. So it, it becomes kind of a modifier of that directional organizational value. So I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily see the, that influence as a, as a third thing, but more of a modifier on the, the value that an organization can receive. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm way out there, but yeah i i can think of an example like a community uh, organization joins the community brings their standard and make it a community standardization uh, so that everyone adopts that standardization and uh, organization can uh, generate value from that standardized thing So it seems like these three are very highly related. 
Of course they are. Yeah, yeah. So influences, I think, extends beyond the development community, possibly in some ways. And then an organization's impact on a project can be derived from development data entirely. An organization's um, value derived from the project can be determined from from the, the repo data and, and platform activity only. But the influence, I think, possibly requires some additional analysis, like Twitter, you know, some of the social media data would need to come into play when we want to talk about influence, unless we operationalize influence only as um, how, you know, some quantification of which organizations are, you know, who's, which organizations commit activity and issue activity seems to be leading the conversation within just the development ecosystem. So that can be different than value derived from or value delivered to the rest of the community. Like there could be an organization just like Google probably has a lot of influence over what gets put into Kubernetes, for example, but how, what their value derived from it and uh, value provided to it are, are possibly different numbers at this point. Does that make sense? It does. Yep. So I think I think the decision yeah, to make is if we want to only include data related to software development in the operationalization of the influence metric. Kevin seems to want to. You want to seem. You seem like you want to bring those two together instead of three metrics only have two metrics. That that value contributed to and influence are essentially the same thing. Is that correct? That was, I would endorse that. I think it's a good place to start. I, I think those are the first two. We can bring them together. I actually think they're two different things. I do too, but like in terms of getting started, probably wrestling with the difference between them will be easier mm -hmm. after we define the first two. That's fine. I what, mean, are, just, what are you yeah. proposing the first two be? Value. The given and value taken. Okay. Yes. And influence is part of value given. I think that's what you're saying, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. I'm... Yeah, I, I was I was saying that it was basically a a modifier or a or a filter on on value given, which means they're they kind of live in the same place. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're different, but if it's easier to move them forward together, that's fine. Uh, so then this probably becomes value given the share of voice. So organizational value provided to a project, something like that. And this will now contain both kind of development oriented metrics that Sean was talking about, things that we can see as part of a release, right? I mean, yeah. That are, that's a kind of a, a clearly defined contribution to the code base as well as influence. So they tweet a lot about the project. They sponsor the project in many ways. So it's it's both. Right. That's what you're Yes. Yep. Yeah. So this this one does this one does make sense to me. Uh so then value becomes really it's a broader net of contributions, which is code based contributions that we can see in a release. And it's also not code contributions, which we may see through sponsorship, which we may see through um, like social media spread.
correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, we're leaving this. We're leaving all that out for now. No, we're leaving it in. In okay. Seven. Kevin is saying put it all in one. Okay. I'm not just, I'm actually so I kind of agree with you that there are different things and they can be separated out, but I'm not sure what they would look like if, if they were separated out. I, I don't know if they. I don't know if they're useful metrics at that point. So I think I think how they would look different is um, the value provided to a project is it's directly and unambiguously measured by the amount of code effectively. I think the influence, if I'm analyzing the repository alone, is measured by what is the relationship between issues opened and discussion about what the what the appropriate boundaries of the feature set and next feature set on the roadmap are for a product um, actually get implemented. So, so my influence on what gets built could be different than the value I provide to the project. Because for example, in, a, in the example I used earlier, Google probably still, I mean, at this point, because it's become a project that many companies are involved in, I would suspect that Google still has or at this point has a greater influence on the direction of the project than it does value provided. Like they've managed to share the load, but it still is ultimately their product at project at the start. And they they are able, they are likely able to influence the roadmap simply because they have a deep knowledge of what it fundamentally is. Even so I would your... analyze repo data differently. Like I would, I would look very closely at issues and discussions and pull requests to see how things are accepted or not accepted. And what so this, worked on. by that definition, this, this metric would be called organizational influence. Well, the one where we're talking about how does the discussion get reflected in what gets built regardless of who built it. I think an organization can have an influence on what gets added to a project that is different than what value they provide or value they derive. And so, so we, we remove the value element from the organizational influence. Hold on a second. This is like an accordion all of a sudden. So for yeah. a while we had three and then I'm we having went three. down to two and now we're yeah. going back three. to three. Well, so I'm going, so, so the reason I went back to three is because I don't think the influence measures should be included in organizational value provided. I think that is only a repository or community level contributions to a project, that that's the value. And that so, is different than what influence I have on what the other companies are building into the product. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. So because I would I would add to that is like uh, to make a distinction between two is uh, bringing is like they bring knowledge, they bring infrastructure, they bring funding, they bring uh, employee support or in those terms and influence is uh, they're telling them what to do or how to do. Yeah, they're directing the development trajectory essentially. Yes. Bringing is they are providing the resources that can be financial, non-financial, or anything. Right. So my so my earlier point was not uh, I was not necessarily wanting to include the the organizational influence in the value provided to the community. It was more about including it in the value provided to the company or the organization. Uh, and that was my point about. In that case, it's basically market share. Uh, it it falls apart a little bit for me if we add it to value provided to the community uh, because it's hard, you know, that may be value, it may not be value. Like influence can be a good or a bad thing in that case. Maybe the maybe the community doesn't want influence. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, like I, I know there's discussions about some people are annoyed that certain companies have greater influence on some projects. So as the, the, so organizational value provided to a community, I think is a metric that we could work on. And I don't think we should include influence in it. Uh, value provided to an organization. That's the big question mark that no one knows the answer to. 
and I don't think we're ready to work on that one yet. Uh, and if we were working on that one, that would be, I think that that influence or market share might be something we would need to consider in that. I think value provided too can be derived somewhat from what other projects does a company operate that use this project? For example, the Linux kernel, you know, a lot of people are deriving value from that. Uh, to the but, organization or to the community? Like if I'm, if I'm Goggins Tech Inc., I derive a lot of value from a free operating system, right? I'm not, I may not ever contribute to the kernel, but I'm deriving a lot of, I'm deriving a great deal of value from it. Yes. Um, I'm, and I, uh, I may derive, but if I'm a small device company, like I'm making end of the wire equipment, I might derive tremendous value from Zephyr. And I probably am already, I'm also probably contributing to Zephyr so that it supports my, whatever my end of the wire device is. Right. So for the, for the value to the organization, my point is that uh, that's kind of a complex thing. There's, there's a bunch of different ways. Some of them are unknown. Uh, and one metric isn't necessarily going to cover it. So I, I think that's a bigger, I think that's a bigger question. However, the value that an organization provides to a community might be a little bit easier to answer right now. Mm -hmm. So, and so I think it's, I think, uh, and, and, and we could probably do that in one metric rather, rather than splitting it up. Uh, and if we do that, then the influence metric is probably a metric on its own. And uh, so basically I'm, yes, I, I am going back to, okay, fine. I see three, but I actually kind of see more than three uh, on the organization side. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that making, am I rambling or? No, no. I mean, I'm, I mean, I think, I guess if we kept it simple and we're starting with two metrics, value derived and value contributed. And I think we could work on those two and they're fairly discreet and understandable. Yeah. Value right. derived to a community. Yeah. And I guess right. what I would argue is that we keep the social media stuff out of uh, value. Derived to a community. Yeah. Yeah. Or Contri I think value contributed. Value contributed to a community, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, okay, so of the 4,000 metrics that are currently on the table, I uh, <laughs> it sounds like the two that, that, um, that should move forward are organizational value contributed to, to, to a, a community. project. Yeah and project. organizational influence on a project. Yes. Those are the full stop, just stop there. Yep. That's correct. Okay. So then the metric that we have that was formerly share of voice is probably best suited to organizational influence on an open source project. It's not yes. perfect, but it's probably got the most language kind of in that direction. Yep. And then we do not have a metric which is organizational value contributed to an open source project or value of value contributed, value contributed to an open source project by an organization. We don't have that metric yet. Right. Okay. I think I agree with that, yes. So Vinod, have you been jotting this down in the, in the notes? Yes, yes, I'm uh, moving between these two. So well, the best option uh, thing I am thinking of is creating three documents. One is uh, uh, because this share of voice has been so jumbled up. Now create two documents. Okay. Let's just start there, okay. and just go ahead and like in the notes, in the spreadsheet, and in the notes say there's a another possible set of metrics, which is the value derived from a project to an organization. 
and we don't even we won't even create a document on that yet we'll kind of cross that directional bridge when we come to it okay. which is going to be after we finish these two metrics <laughs> yeah yeah that's i agree with that strategy Can we just call this organizational influence? Hold on, let the nod catch up for a second here. Oh. So I'm in the spreadsheet and I'm adding two. Uh, try. So if you go to the spreadsheet, I've added two rows, row 30 and 31. Uh, let me see if that's correct. Yep, and then I'm going to change 29 to organizational influence. Okay. Yeah, this is this is totally the Google metric, right? Does that mean is that oh how much how much organizational influence does Google have on Android? How much organizational influence does Google have on Kubernetes? Uh, it's, the, it's the Google metric. All right, so then Kevin to your title question. Yeah, I think organizational influence is fine. I've noticed that some of our metrics names are starting to get kind of long. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. And they're more they're more descriptive, but uh, harder to manage when we get multiple multiple metrics. So, all right. So then, to Sean's comments, if we take a look at the description. Organizational, so this is influence. It's a measure. It's really a measure of how much, how much, is that the right word? Of. I'm gonna delete that upper, the upper part. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, I think we just put it in there as notes. Do we want to say a project specifically, or do we prefer the community language? Because the community can imply multiple projects. Community, okay. I think that's, I think that line actually works. Not a community's influence. Oh, no, no, the, uh, an organize a company's or organization's influence. And I think the, the following sentence, I think fits. Okay. 
influence and it's not in a competitive space. So then this actually kind of becomes open source ecosystem, maybe. Well, this is just kind of a repeat of the prior sentence at that point. Yeah, that's fair. I don't really like this language. A signal of power. Yeah. Um, let me share my screen here. I mean, uh, to a to a degree. I, I mean, it. it is for some of the for the for some of the really corporately dominated projects. It is right. So the the control is uh, well. It, it, yeah. The influence is so heavy that it's it's it kind of becomes a it's a form of control, right? So mm -hmm. uh, control. What if we just said a signal of control? Yeah. In an open source context. We don't need to use open source context anymore because we're not no. translating it from a marketing term. This equates to the level of influence an organization has over the development, over the, and it's probably the, yeah, maybe it is. They do not own, I'm gonna bring it around that. Yeah, I think that's good. I forgot I turned my camera off. I was shaking my head, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Stop it. <laughs> you talking to your dog? No, he was talking to me. Oh. <laughs> open source, really, open source communities compete for attention. So organizations. for influence yeah. that. or in I craft communities is fine. when the supporting when responds well to, I don't know what that means you know what that means responds well to competitive metrics um I I I don't know <clears throat> are you up 
Organizations compete for influence in crowded communities when an organization responds well to competitive metrics. What that means? What does that mean? When an organization responds well to competitive metrics, use influence to show the community's percentage of market share. I don't, this doesn't make much sense anymore to me. Yeah, I'd get rid of it. The measure. Can be effective. Be um. Lightning. Or some organizational through some opportunities to show growth and organizational influence. Mm -hmm. So I think the this this last part is actually probably the the purpose that this metric was originally written for. The last so, sentence here. Yeah. So this this metric can help an open source uh, an internal. A, a, a corporation's open source advocate uh, justify yeah, continued fair. funding and support. That's probably the that's primary. Fair. Yeah, I think that still, that still yeah. works in this case. Yeah, I think it's, to be honest with you, I think it's kind of still the same thing. So. Okay, so organizations compete for influence in crowded communities. The measure of organizational influence can be enlightening on its own. Maybe, yes, I guess it can. Or serve. It may also, so it, it, it may also uh, inform uh, boundaries to participation. Or, or barriers for participation. Where would you put that? Uh, organizations compete for influence. Uh, this metric can help an open source advocate in an organization internal to a north. Uh, in an organization, justify continued funding and support for contribution. Uh, this metric oh, also inform uh, contribution. Uh, mm -hmm. comment in there as well. I think the line in the description that starts with, but contributes to and has a vested interest. Where are we? It's the word vested. But contributes to doesn't really go with the rest of the line since we removed the, it doesn't tell me. Gonna, this equates uh, to this, this level. This equates to the level of influence an organization has yeah. on the development trajectory of an open source project. 
think oh, so, so, so should it be that it contributes oh. to and has a vested interest in? Okay. That it contributes to? Uh, maybe open source. And are we using the community okay. language? Sure, thought that seemed better. So an organization, so an organization, uh, when they're engaged in in an open source project, they they do contribute to it, and they do have a vested interest in it because they are they're they're investing time and money into it. So they can do that without having an, an ownership stake. This equates to the level of influence an organization has over the development mm -hmm. trajectory of an open source community that it contributes to and has a vested interest in. Organizations which are often larger enterprise corporations may influence the direction of a community. Seemingly some level of control with them or actually, maybe that maybe we can leave that project actually. And the second one is community. This equates to the level of influence an organization has over the development directory of open source community that it contributes to. And we'll move that back to project. Yeah, this is good. I think this works well. Okay. All right. And so description organizations compete for influence in crowded communities. We could probably just say just that. Let's what happened to your sentence that you were adding here, Kevin? Uh, it fell apart, so I decided to step away from it for a second. Okay. I, th I think it still needs something there, but I'm not. Uh... What's the? What are you trying to say? Well, so is the the objective of the metric, like, so if this metric existed, how would people use it? So I what does? What are you? What are you trying to say? What was the sentence you were trying to write? Uh, basically, the the sentence. If you a, if we gauge. A project that has, if we look at a project that has heavy, heavy organizational influence, that may actually inform contributions from other individuals. Like for for example, in the in the case of Google Android, uh, other organizations may have difficulty contributing to that project. Uh, in the case of uh, with Open Mama, uh, because of the heavy organizational influence. Uh, individual developers who are not affiliated with corporations could have trouble uh, contributing to that project. So, so in that case, organizational influence can actually can inform whether contributions are accepted by just third part of that sentence I just wrote. The signal of how easy or difficult it is. Yep, that that works. Thank you. Yep. Uh, maybe uh, if you're outside of, should maybe add a, add a clarifier. So organizational influence may also serve as a signal of how easy or difficult it may be to contribute to an open source project uh, if you are outside of the organization or for an as, as outsider. A newcomer. Yeah. Well, or a, honestly, anybody. If I yeah. see... I'd leave it just because if I see somebody's organizational influence growing and I'm already in the project, I might be like, oh, it's going to become harder for me. Yeah. Now that they have all the maintainership positions. Yeah. Stormy agrees with me too. <laughs> yeah, that can affect path to leadership as well. Yeah. yeah for sure. Stormy is a strong agreement. So. All right, I say we, this is good. We got, we actually made good progress. Yeah. And I think we got through two of the key parts of this metric. And I think we also figured out other metrics yeah. that may be on the horizon. So well done.
Yeah. Uh, just a, uh, we are using the new template now, which does have the contributor header at the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. And we need to remember to fill that in. Yeah. So I just went down and added a bunch. Okay. Thank uh, you. Alrighty. But if I'm missing anyone, we should probably oh, add Elizabeth. Venya. We should probably add Venya as well, seeing as how. Um, oh, and uh, was this was this wasn't this wasn't Venya's? This was uh, Matt Roberg's, was it? Or okay, Matt. Yeah, Matt Roberg. Just because right. even though it's changed a lot, yeah. we wouldn't be. But yeah, uh, that's his idea in Yeah. So Elizabeth was on this one too. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt Roberg. And I think in the last meeting, uh, Get the... Stephen was there also. Who? Uh, Stephen Jacob. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was. You're right. Stephen Jacob? Yep. Jacobs or Jacob? Yes. 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 We are at the end of our meeting time. Oh. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, made a good progress. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, no, everybody. I, I thought we got through. I, I thought we cleared up a lot. So good. Yes, we did. Good. Good meeting, team. <laughs> it was. See, I'm going to stop the recording. Bye, everybody. Right, bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.